Let me just adjust the. Okay. Okay, this is fine. So very good morning, and uh, this is a three AM session for everyone. And the question is, how many of you are studying right now? Because when you're preparing for the exam, and you know that days are limited, so sometimes students think that today it's a celebration day, and uh, we can take an off, and we will not study because it's the shehra, and uh, this is my day. I can take my time. But then there are some other students who know that exam is in ten days, approx. So like today is fifth and thirteenth, you have an exam. So technically eight days only, and uh, they know that all celebrations, holidays, the shehra, Diwali, they will always come every year. But once I'm settled in my career, every day is the shehra, every day is the Diwali. so there are approaches and this is the reason that i am not giving up even on the shehra and let's do a class the shehra pe pad lete while duniya while the others will enjoy the day it's a holiday it's a celebration it's a festival we will study hum aaj bhi padhenge aaj bhi padhenge this is very important now first of all a very happy vijay dashmi to everyone very happy the shehra to everyone uh shubhodashmi is also called shubhodashmi today in this lecture i will tell you some important writers along with the revenge tragedy idea revenge tragedy uh as it looks so simple that it's so simple i will be giving you details of revenge tragedy characteristics of revenge tragedy and what are the important things related to revenge tragedy because uh, when i was teaching in my offline batch and generally we go in depth of everything i was dealing that most of the students in the class in offline batch all they know is that revenge tragedy means some revenge after that no idea nothing so today we going <clears> to <throat> today we going to talk about this revenge tragedy concept idea and we'll also talk about some important writers till then take your pen and paper get ready so that we can start i have many things to share today so we'll make sure that this session is like you know these are the print outs we have shared in offline online students must have received it and that uh, revenge called revenge tragedy idea the pdfs for revenge tragedy we will be sharing it in online classes today ye aapko mil jayega don't worry now focus on this thing the first title we have is webster a dark playwright in the renaissance england so the first thing that comes in our brain is that what is exactly a revenge tragedy so we simply say that revenge tragedy is a tragedy where the plot where the theme actually has a revenge ek minute here hold on Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's with me. It's with me. So, revenge tragedy <clears throat> is a tragedy in which some story, some plot is revolved around a way that there is some important character. He is seeking revenge. कोई एक important character है जो revenge ले रहा है. अब होता क्या है? We can say revenge tragedy. तो revenge tragedy was Hamlet, no doubt. It was how the revenge tragedy tradition came in England. Revenge tragedy tradition came in England with Thomas Kett, one of the famous university wit, and also a question that Thomas Kett he did not join any university. So Thomas Kett is a university wit, but it is also said that he was not a member of any university. He didn't get proper education in university. Then why he is called university wit? Well, that's a different topic. We already have talked about these things. in my lectures of university wits you can simply read those lectures or listen to those lectures today our concern is that thomas kett is the first person who brought revenge tragedy idea in english okay in england he wrote spanish tragedy hieronymo is mad again you know that we also know that that thomas kett the idea the man who brought the idea of revenge tragedy was inspired by seneca now see it is said kid surpassed the standard of seneca 
kid made Seneca bleed white. And then there are writers, professors who believe that there was work written by Thomas Kidd called You Are Hamlet. Capital U, capital R and Hamlet, your Hamlet. You are Hamlet. Now the problem is that unfortunately that manuscript is not available. The manuscript of your Hamlet, you are Hamlet is missing. But yes, there is a confirmation that Thomas Kidd wrote a work called Your Hamlet. It is believed it inspired Shakespeare to write Hamlet. Hamlet is a revenge tragedy. Now when we talk about Thomas Kidd, Thomas Kidd's reference or standard of dealing tragedy was brutal, murders, bloodshed. Hamlet has a revenge tragedy. Then in some other uh, Shakespearean plays, we have some kind of basic revenge like Macbeth. Macbeth kills the family members of Macduff. Macduff takes revenge. In King Lear, there is a son, one boy, who is a bastard, Edmund. Edmund takes revenge from his father. So some small portion of revenge is there. Now after Shakespeare, when Shakespeare died, post Shakespearean dramatist, Hayward, Beaumont, Fletcher, Marston, Decker, when these writers came, they were also dealing with revenge. And this was the time of Jacobian era. Queen Elizabeth, she passed away in 1603. James I became the king in 03, 1603. From 1603 to 1625, when James I was the king, what happens there? James I was an outsider, a Scottish king. He was from Scotland. James VI of Scotland becomes James I of England. And this was the time that almost every dramatist was dealing with the idea of revenge. Marston was dealing with the idea of revenge, which is known as Antonio and Melida and Antonio's revenge. Decker wrote revenge tragedies. The references of Beaumont Fletcher, where we have books like A Women Hater, Made in Cheapside, or John Ford's Dispute, She's a Whore. These kind of books are all revenge tragedies. But when they were writing revenge tragedies, it was not only revenge. It was also that these writers were heavily inspired by Kidd. A lot of bloodshed. Do you know John Ford wrote a famous work, Tis Petey, She's a Whore. Like this is sad, she's a whore, she's not a trusted one. In this particular play, there is a scene that the boy kills the girl with the dagger. He stabs her heart with the dagger, takes the heart out and walks in the you know, courtyard, in the, walks in the courtroom. So this is a scene that the murderer has killed the girl because he wanted to avenge, he wanted to take revenge. He has killed the girl, took the heart out. He has a dagger, he has a sword and the heart is still in the sword and he's walking in front of everyone in the court. These kind of, you know, gruesome things, heart rendering things, these kind of performances were given by these writers and that's why they are especially known as the Jacobian writers. Now, whenever they say who are Jacobian writers, 99% writers are the revenge tragedy writers. But when we say that do we have only these works from 1603 to 1625? No, there are exceptions. There are poets who wrote. In fact, in 1603 to 1625, Shakespeare also wrote works. Shakespeare kept on writing. The last work by Shakespeare was Tempest, 1611. So no doubt, there are mostly revenge tragedies, but we have exceptions also. And then, my friend, this was also the time Ben Johnson was writing comedies. Walpole 1605, Alchemy 1610. So, when someone says that discuss Jacobian literature, then it's a different thing. When someone says discuss Jacobian tragedy, then you have to switch to revenge tragedy. Now, many of you must have read that Tom Stoppard, he wrote a famous story. Shakespeare in Love, one of my favorite story. Later it got converted into a movie and uh, the movie was Oscar Awardy movie. So Oscar Awardy movie here, that was Oscar Awardy movie. Tom Stoppard, Shakespeare in Love. Do you know what happens there in Shakespeare in Love? Though it is, there are two stories. So first is, it is believed that Shakespeare was a great dramatist of that time and he was performing a lot of great plays. He was favorite of Queen Elizabeth. Then Shakespeare was in love with a lady called Voila. 
and Voila wanted to perform a role. Voila wanted to perform a role on the stage, but Elizabethan era, the uh, role performances for the women was not allowed. But Voila forces Shakespeare. Voila says, please, 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 let me perform a play. I want to show my acting skills. But at that time, female characters were not allowed. Now, in love, as you know, people do mistakes in love. Pyar mohabbat mein, bev kufiyan ho jati hain. So Shakespeare was in love with her and Shakespeare thought that, okay, I will give you a chance to perform a role on the stage. Now, in a performance, Voila plays the role of a male. Now, it is said, my friends, that Queen Elizabeth was also watching the performance and Queen Elizabeth, being a woman, being a female, she figured it out that the character who is in front of me on the stage, a male character, is not a male actually, it's a female. Now, the Queen caught Shakespeare red-handed. When she probed it, she found that, yes, it is Voila. It is not Shakespeare's male character, male actor. It's a female actress. And when she found it, she gave punishment to Shakespeare and Voila. Now the question is, what was that punishment? The punishment was that Voila will be married to, that Voila will be married to someone else. Now this was the punishment for both of them. That you have uh, questioned my rules, regulations, you have questioned the rules of theatre for love. So the punishment is that you will not be married. Your love will not come to a uh, final, you know, happy, happy ending. That was the punishment. It is said that after this, Shakespeare wrote Twelfth Night. And there Voila becomes a male character. Voila, Cesario. You must be knowing that. Duke or Sino. Right? Twelfth Night. The same book, Tom Stoppard's Shakespeare in Love. Now, please remember this style. This is very important. Because you will not find these things in William J. Long, David Deches, Compton Naked or average net JRA books. This is advanced level study. To teach you Raven's strategy, I'm taking references of Tom Stopper, Shakespeare in Love. There is a scene, a boy, a young boy has a rat in his hand, a mouse in his hand. He is holding the mouse with his tail, pooch pakad ke, chuha, uske haat mein hai. And there is a cat, she is waiting for the mouse to eat him, mouse is alive and the boy is feeding, boy is trying to feed the cat. Now we have seen it's natural, cat kills the mouse, it's natural, it's the law of nature, course of nature. But can you do that? Like you hold a mouse and take it close to the mouth of the cat and cat is opening the mouth and you're putting the mouse in the mouth. It's not easy. I know it's not, it's cruel. But then, when this boy is doing it, he's introduced like this, that this kind of man he was. In the story, Shakespeare meets him and Shakespeare says that you like performances. Shakespeare talks to the boy and says, what is your opinion on my famous book, Titus Andronicus? We all know Titus Andronicus is one of the Shakespeare's uh, revenge tragedy play dealing with a lot of murders and bloodsheds and you know cruelty so it is said that Shakespeare talks to the boy and says what is your thought on my famous work Titus Andronicus the boy replies I like it when they cut the heads when they rape women when they mutilate the body and there is a lot of blood I like the games of knives. मुझे चाकुओं का खेल पसंद है. मुझे तलवारों से एक दूसरे को काटना पसंद है. I like that thing. That is all writing. That's all about writing. लिखना है तो ये लिखो. That boy was Webster. That boy has been who has been introduced in the story, John Webster. Yes, the man who wrote Duchess of Malfi, the man who wrote White Devil. Now, when you read Duchess of Malfi, my friends, remember this point that Cardinal Ferdinand, the lady Duchess, Duchess is already, you know, uh, Duchess is already a widow. So when the story starts, Duchess is already a widow. And the brothers don't want her to be married again. The brothers are like having honor issues. So they know sister was married. Sister is, a, you know, a widow now. And she should not get married. She should not fall in love again. So they keep a close watch. They keep an eye on her. And... 
technically the girl is uh, in house arrest she is not allowed to fall in love to meet male people or boys one day in the court one person comes called antony he talks about italian lifestyle he talks about moral conduct he talks about behavior this impresses the lady now duchess is heavily impressed and she forms a secret affair soon they are married secretly they are married now what happens brothers feel that there is something fishy brothers ko doubt hai ki kuch to gadbad hai they appoint one of the spies called bosola write down this name bosola is very important character b o s o l a bosola is a very important character and what does he do bosola becomes the inn keeper stable keeper like the horse keeper we can simply say he starts doing a petty job with the duchess that's a horse keeper and he keeps a close eye and finds out that duchess is secretly married duchess is having kids and she's again pregnant and this time to confirm the pregnancy it was also a question of net exam to confirm the pregnancy he gives her apricots to eat when she eats apricots her pregnancy is revealed her husband husband's best friend they all get killed Ferdinand takes Duchess into the prison and gives inhuman torture. Like one of my student, brilliant student, Vineet. Vineet, it's been a long time. Uh, don't forget to drop me your Facebook text. One of my finest student has also written a beautiful line. Cover her face. Yes, this will come in. So what happens? Ferdinand has locked her sister. She is in the prison. For a Duchess, for a lady who is sophisticated, if you... take the lady out of her beautiful chamber and lock her in a prison it itself is a big punishment for the women the princess the one who is very sophisticated but no ferdinand says no i will add more punishments and then in the prison where there is no light just a little bit light dim light in the dim light ferdinand shows chopped hand chopped head mutilated body of her husband of kids and throw it in front of her with a dim light effect now see this thing these images are actually not the real body parts they are the waxed body parts wax means mom artificial ones but in the dim light the artificial ones also look real so why he was torturing her why he was playing with her psychology by showing the artificial hand artificial head mutilated body you know stabbed body why this was a question of exam that why he goes for inhuman torture to sister then he also sends the group of mad people to live in the chamber of sister so that they are all mad and sister will become mad why this kind of inhuman torture anybody write in comments batao Without, it is said that when they were born, Ferdinand and the Duchess were twins. <clears throat> Ferdinand and Duchess were twins. So Ferdinand used to believe that as they were the same body parts, they same had same bodies. Ferdinand used to believe that he has a role, and he commands the body of his sister because they have the part of same body. twins are like this so they get separated after the birth so twins are like this so he still believes that he commands the body of sister and the body belongs to him which is technically kind of possessiveness inspired by incest he used to believe that i am the one only the one who can deserve her this you know kind of incest plus that patriarchal mindset that your body belongs to me so your body will uh, take my commands my orders so technically he behaves without knowing it as a lover this is again studied by freud that his anger was actually inspired because of the feeling that he has been cheated as a lover because for him his sister was not a sister his sister was a female a body that belongs to him the one who is you know uh, he owns the body and when she cheats him 
she gets married secretly she has babies he thinks that i have been deceived as a lover i have been cheated as a lover so that possessiveness revenge in love anger in love this becomes the reason he tortures her same is with white devil white devil victoria corombona is already married duke brasciano already married but they still have an affair they are already married and then victoria's brother flamiano he knows that my sister has an affair with someone though she is already married he doesn't say anything because he wants money he wants uh, support of duke for his career advancement so he doesn't say a word and then what happens sister uh, victoria's husband and brasciano's wife they both get killed brasciano's wife had one more lover lodovico when he finds out that just to continue the affair they have killed my women my lady my love he comes to take revenge and victoria is thrown in the prison on the charges of killing people where she you know suffer she dies this is very disgusting <laughs> but yes in revenge tragedy post shakespearean revenge tragedy most of the characters have actually you know a connection with women either it's uh, seducing a woman chasing a woman molesting a woman or affairs these are the common things in post shakespearean dramatists primarily in revenge tragedies all of these tragedies are defaming women a maid in cheap side a women hater where we have a famous character gondarino who is a women hater a misogynist then tespiti she is a whore then uh, uh, there is one more work uh, where he says philaster love lies a bleeding then there are other works where a woman killed with kindness so technically they are targeting women and the only solution for the women for being adulterous was either you get killed by your husband or you commit suicide so if you are a good woman but did adultery suicide you must repent by suicide these are the common traits of jacobians defaming women and if the women is found guilty either they are killed by lovers or husbands they are avenged re, sorry revenged or they die by suicide one of the finest example is haywards a woman killed with kindness where the lady who has been you know master frankford and n they are married n is seduced by wendel and when frankford finds it out he deserts her she lives alone now she is under repentance she is pray, pleading guilty and she stops eating she doesn't eat anything but it's too late before the husband pardons she dies of hunger so this was revenge tragedy style of jacobians now what you have to do make sure duchess of malfi you read it you know what happens when malfi is dead duchess that duchess is dead ferdinand comes to her says cover her face mine eyes dazzle she died young imagine this thing this is a particular line one of the most famous line from the book this talks about the behavior of ferdinand who who kills duchess ferdinand himself then why is talking about moralities and good things and cover her face she died young i feel bad these kind of things this is his approach towards her i ask you a question wuthering heights just one work written by emily bronte wuthering heights the modern age dhadkan movie <laughs> you must have seen bollywood movie dhadkan very much based on wuthering heights what happens there is a boy who is adopted by a rich man rich man already have two kids one boy one girl girl's name is catherine the name of adopted boy is heathcliff they grow up fall in love but catherine is not able to marry heathcliff because heathcliff is not rich he is poor has no family background she tells it to nelly dean that i want to marry but i cannot marry him heathcliff listens to this overhears and then leaves the city goes away and returns after 3 years with a lot of money dekhi hai na dhadkan movie aapne anjali main roz chalta tha girta tha chalta tha 50 rupaye se 500 crore ka safar maine kaise kiya i still wonder kaise kiya matlab girta tha chalta tha girta chalta is walk he is seeing symbolic like i would 
get you know failures then i would fight back i would get failures but still yaar 50 rupees se 500 crore 3 saal mein he must be adani of that time apne samay ka adani hoga so when he returns he has a lot of money and when he finds out that catherine is married in a neighboring house thrust cross grange what does he do he comes to the boy catherine's brother the one who used to hate him in childhood becomes his friend makes him a drunkard makes him a gambler and under the influence of drink and gamble takes all his property then he marries catherine's sister in law where catherine is married catherine's husband's sister he marries her isabella starts torturing her and also involves catherine's husband in alcohol and gambling and takes that property also sab properties ka malik ban jata hai and he is still not able to be with catherine he is only sophisticated and having love for catherine for everyone else he has jealousy he has anger it is said that even after death of catherine he has three kids one of his own one of that boys and one of catherine three kids he takes care of catherine's kid only and other two kids are kept illiterate he tortures the kids bachcho ko bhi gawar bana rakhta hai padhata nahi hai what kind of story is this a love story a tragedy or revenge tragedy kaun si kahani hai ye pyar mein usne sab ki aisi taisi kar di sab ka band baja diya to what do we call it revenge tragedy or just a tragedy or a romantic story you will tell me in the comments one more there is a famous writer fay weldon a feminist writer and has written a book questioning feminism fay weldon she wrote a famous work she devil she devil is the lady who tortures her own husband troubles her own husband just to save her own husband she was salman khan of her time she was like morenge bhi hum bachayenge bhi hum so she does that she makes sure that husband has lost everything husband is under pressure under torture and when he has given up she comes to rescue him she comes to save him and then show that i am the good wife i have saved you i am the good wife i'm not able to read your comments yogesh gangadhar are uh, showing masses retracted i don't know what's happening not able to read your comments so guys this was a morning session for all of you in online class i will share the print out so that you can read characteristics of revenge tragedy and all other points and we will have a dashera special session also in day time ek aur live karenge jisme hum log discuss karenge we have already talked about opening lines we will go for most important 100 best closing lines ye karna hai and today we'll discuss utopian works नॉन फिक्शन आई ऑलरेडी हैव टॉट नॉन फिक्शन मैंने बता दिया है पहले और आज आपको ना इम्पोर्टेंट लिस्ट जो है बुकर इम्पोर्टेंट और पुलिटर इम्पोर्टेंट लिस्ट ये आपको दे दी जाएगी आज टूडे यू विल गेट ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स सो मेक श्योर बी रेडी फॉर टूडे सेशन इट विल बी बाई टेन और इलेवन ए एम जस्ट बी रेडी एंड ऑल दोज हु डूडेंट गेट इट हु वॉन्ट इट ड्रॉप मी अ व्हाट्सएप ऑन डबल एट वन जीरो Double eight one zero two eight nine six three seven. Now the question comes: <clears throat> What will you do after three AM session? See, if you are studying whole night, then sleep. This is your time to sleep. If you woke up for the sessions, then don't sleep. Study. See, I am also sipping tea. This is my special cup. and then i'm going to work on this one lottery theory so i'm also not going to sleep at least not before 6 o'clock if i by 6 i feel sleepy i will sleep but not before 6 o'clock so this is 3 am session this madness is required enjoy learning or ha huh, tell it to your friends that there is one teacher who gets up at 3 and teaches bye bye take care.